We are the Otara Rat Rangers. We like to trap rats to make sure that um, we're predator free by 2050. It's just nice to see Kane you know that you've done some of it. And you can see what's like, see what's improving by your trapping that we're doing. So you don't have much left. Our school runs a nature warriors program. We have various things going, but our rat rangers is probably one of the more important and popular things that we do. Our mission as rat rangers is to become um, predator free by, by 2050. 2050 yeah. We started four years ago when Mrs. Allen, our DP, started the program in conjunction with the support of Andy from. Fully, fully predator free. When she left to become a principal, I said that I was quite keen. I'm the administrator, and um, the board agreed to release me one day a week to do the work. My favourite part of being a rat ranger is that you get to go out and check all the traps, and you can see what's like improving. It feels nice to be part of a group and like to have the same goals and. It's just nice to see Kane you know that you've done some of it. We like to trap rats to make sure that um, we're predator free by 2050. Obviously it's working because we're not getting too many uh, rats in our traps. The kids are so enthusiastic about doing the rat rangers work, it doesn't take much motivation from me. We've got traps spread around the school and we go check them every Tuesday and Thursday because if there's any rats in there, we want to clear it as soon as possible. We have to put on some gloves first. We have two or one for each hand. Because rats carry diseases. And here we've got um, green food colouring, and the reason we use that is so that um, birds think it's poison and won't go for it, so that we can keep them all alive. So we use peanut butter and some green food dye, and we mix it all together in a bowl. So then we mix up the dye with the peanut butter and it turns to a greeny colour. And it looks like that. And then we walk around the traps and put them all in the traps. When we put the peanut butter in the traps, it's like, um, kind of sticks. They can't pick it up off the pressure plate and run away with it. It's not like a whole food. Yep. It's very popular, so we have to be quite selective. Because the group run without supervision, we restrict the rat rangers to the year five and up, with the exception of a couple of little chaps who are very involved on their own properties, so they've got quite a bit of knowledge. And we have to have kids that we feel are responsible enough to go and check the traps on their own without direct supervision. We have 10, ten traps around, around the school. The school that we monitor twice a week. Once on Tuesday, once on Thursday. Usually takes us 25 minutes to check all the traps and do all our gear and stuff. So this is our first trap that we have in the forest. We've got a few others. Like one? This is one of our, uh, another two. So this one's still got a little bit left in it. So to bait it, we usually go on the pressure plate or just above the roof. And we put it far back so they have to stick their head in quite a long way, which is almost certain that they will get trapped if they try to go for it. Yeah. So if we do it close to the front, they could easily take it. So it's easier to put it at the back of the trap and guaranteed. Yeah. Because we're in the forest and kids play in here, we usually put the ones where kids play in boxes so that's a lot safer for them. The reason I put it by the stump is because it's all sheltered and 
it's just a general place where rats might dig a hole down and hang out. We well, usually choose where they where the traps go, where like there there's a lot, like over by the macadamia trees there's a lot of like macadamia nuts that are just eaten. So it's like a yeah. it's like a guessing game. You have to you have to sort of look at all the clues and find out where the best place would be, as well as keeping it out of the way of children. A while ago, we put some wood out for them to chew on, and then where they that cardboard yeah, yeah, where they chewed on it quite a bit. We, where put, we put some traps. traps. Yeah, you know these those ones where when they step on them, oh yeah, the um, it goes yeah, the footprints, the footprints, ink footprints. track thing. Are they good for when you're looking to see what you have to get rid of? Like once you've eradicated most of it, once you only got the stragglers left, you have to try find out what they are and put out the specialist cage or something for that. We've got another trap over there, and then we'll go around to the pool area. No. I think a little kid's taking off the phone. No, that, that doesn't go on no There's still a little bit of bait in there, but we'll still rebait it, just put a little bit in there. This is a reasonably new trap, like, it's not one of the really old ones. Has it caught something yet? I don't think it has. I think it's caught, like, a mouse. No. Mm. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. And the little, it's like... Well, that place where we had that trap in that box, you know, just over there? Remember that one? Oh, is it still here? Yeah. We just got this one. We just forgot this. Wait, wait, take out the trap then. Some kids often will come through. I would just hide around here. Yeah, we might put it on right here. Go through like, yeah. Nah. No, because they run through here quite a lot. Nah. Maybe in here somewhere. Yeah. Look at that. Oh yeah, we, we caught a few rats through here. Oh yes, yep. we'll stick it in here. Yeah. Just watching out the way guys. It's nice and nestled. Yeah, like, some kids. Right just stick it right, right in, in, stick it like real far. I'm a, mm -hmm. a little bubble with a few things to play like right in here. Like, they'll, yeah. they'll be like right here, there, there. Can you actually see that? You can cover it up a bit. No, I don't think you can see it through there. I quite like where that is. The seniors that left who were in the rat ranges, they had a like toy that they put in the traps to show what would happen to the little kids. But they still put like pine cones and stuff in it. So we try to hide them as best as we can. So we checked the traps in class time, not at break time, because all the kids are coming round and probably following us and don't really know the rules. And We don't want them to see where we've put them. Yeah, we just want to kind of keep it quiet. Secret. <laughs> yeah. Pretty strict guidelines and the kids know this and respect it about if you get the privilege to be a rat ranger, you don't grab a ball and play on the court for the 20 minutes. You can't have too many in the group because it becomes unmanageable and the more you have in the group, the more likely you are to have kids that will drift off and maybe not be as engaged and be doing things that they shouldn't be doing. <laughs> But generally speaking, 99% of the time, they're all really, really good. And then if, if the senior kids find that there's somebody who maybe is mucking around a little bit, they will come back and they'll talk to me and we'll have a discussion about how we handle it and then we'll talk to the person who's maybe mucking around and discuss other ways that they could be better engaged. So over here we have a trap. The reason we put it here is because it's right next to the pool, so there's water. but. I mean, you could hasn't caught anything. Put it in quite a weird place. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly good. I'm gonna hold it, Ralph, so I can put the bait in. So how long would you keep a trap somewhere? Well, if it's not catching something? Do you uh, just... Probably like a few months, and then once we haven't caught anything, we'd move it. Yeah, see? Can. 
Then the ones over here we put down because it's like compost bins and everything over there. So, yeah. Is. But then we have another trap next to this rat hole. So this is our rat hole. We put our rats in here so they can decompose once um, we've caught them. So from the trap, we lift up the tail and bring it all the way over to here, lift up this lid, and then we put it in. But it's pretty stinky in there. <laughs> but when it's full, we'll dig another hole for them, for more rats to go in, so they can decompose. There's another trap here. So, put some there. Top on the teeth. On the teeth. Just further down the back. Yep. Yep. So then we put it back in the box. We put that on, so it covers it. So the rain doesn't get onto the peanut butter. So we have two traps in here. One was down on oh, this side. And this is the macadamia nut tree yeah, so that we have. This is one of the nuts that the yeah. rat must eat them. Is that the rat must eat them? In a big hole in Nothing else. Mm, so they're strong jaws and teeth to get through something like this. So we cable tied this um, trap to the tree, so if a rat gets inside and a cat wants to try to take it away, the trap won't go with it, the trap will just stay there. And then we can come and check it and rebate it. From term three, which is this term, to term four, we train up brand new people that are around Nate's or Ralph age, so that they can come up to be seniors so that they know and so like all the people from two three years ago all trained us up so it's knowledge just going through. We have a succession plan so we've got uh, four year eight students that will be leaving for college next year so halfway through the year we bring in some younger ones who would be keen and the other kids are pretty strong on who they think should come into the group. So there's a bit of group discussion over who they think's got something to offer. So down here's our trap. Yeah, we're just, just wait. This is, oh. We've got quite a, I think we've got. This is like different. an out of bounds area for kids, so it's good. No one's allowed to they don't really get disturbed much in here. All the baits being taken? Well, we don't want to use all of it though. We don't have much left. Yeah, that should be enough. <laughs> yep, that's good. Yep. Okay. So how often would you find something in the trap? Really? Mm. Kind of like once a fortnight. Depending on the time of year we'll get different amount of traps because we're in the school holidays there'll be less children around so there's less food for them to get. The start of the Very year rarely. was when we were hitting it real good. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, were getting like this. two to three each, every oh. like, so we're getting around six to eight. It was very rare to get one. We didn't catch anything in that trap, but it, it was still set. We just rebaited it, but it'll be ready next time. So we have a um, app that we use called TrapNZ, and we put all our data onto that, and it just keeps track of how many rats and mice and birds we've caught 
over the time. So it adds up onto stats of like this rural area about how much we've caught. Yeah, it's quite interesting when you see it. It's different areas, so like Predator Free Franklin, Predator Free Fairy Fairy, which is a sm really small one. A lot of the kids that live on the farms, they do a lot of that at their house. Some of us have traps around our properties, which is in this community, so we know that we'll probably get Predator Free. A lot of the kids that are involved in the rat ranges also do trapping and things on their own farms, so they take that back out into the community. We do lots of trapping around our farm and other people. We like giving back to the community by teaching other people how to trap as well, and then that can continue on in generations. Yeah. Some kids don't want to be involved directly with touching the rats or doing anything like that, but they're the ones that like the idea or believe in the whole process of trapping and they will put their hands up to do the bird counts. So we try and kind of give them a role. Every month we do our bird counts to see if our trapping's working. With all of the kiddo and tui, we can easily tell that all of the trapping that we've been doing is working. Yeah. And all the time and effort that we're putting in is yeah. paying off. Yeah. Wait. Let's Down. go here. Because I've never really been in here. Yeah. Should I mark down the two tui? What are those? Finches. I have to Small birds. So for a bird count, we stay in a forest or a bushy tree area and we count as many birds we can see. Yeah. And so um, when we are doing the bird count, we can see how much the trapping ha is working with all the tui and kiridu that we see starting to come back. Yeah. How many were there? Two. Yeah. And then... So we've just seen two tui fly over as well. We like to do it in a nice shaded area, area for the birds yeah. to play around yeah. in. And... Should I count the fan tail? Where's the fan tail? Oh yeah. Is it on there? We do it before the little kids come out and scream and like disturb all of the birds. What's that? It's another fantail. There's something moving around that tree up there, but I'm trying to see what it is. Hmm. There's something up in those trees. Yeah. There's quite a few, eh? Yeah, I'd put down maybe five of oh, this one. Another one just flew up at the top of a tree there. Um, well, they tend to, they tend to like stay in like an area, they have paths, kind of. Eh? So there's, yeah, there's a few, there's like a bunch of swallows up in that tree. We can tell that it's them because there's others that are flying over there, but it, they're different. Why? Yeah, because they're coming from different directions. Yeah. And we really want to encourage our kids to come. They're quite amazing to watch flying around. Yeah, especially they go tend to go up on the power lines. Yeah, a lot over, they like over um, there. berries and 
trees like that. When they poo, um, <laughs> they poo out um, seeds, which then replants native trees. Trees, which... and then they will then come and play. Yeah. And when we see a kereru or tui flying by, we also need to keep an eye out of what tree they come out of and look to see if we can see any nests. We've had those, um, what were those birds that have been nesting over there? Plovers, they're yeah, Australian the plovers. birds. They've been nesting, nesting here on the grass. But they've gone now. Yeah. Last year we had like three chicks over there. Yeah, a bit of a windy path, eh? So that's all our traps that we've got. Didn't catch anything, unfortunately. But oh. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, but so that just means that the traps are working. Yeah. Well, yeah. So when we don't get anything, it's like it's kind of not fun. But when we do catch one, it's really motivating and it's exciting and good. Yeah. So we've got two traps in here. It's one down the fire end and one down that other end. When we do, don't get traps though, it's, I mean rats, it is like, though we don't feel excited about it, it does mean it's good. Yeah, yeah it does. It's also, it's good when we don't catch any and it's also good when we do catch them. Because when we catch them, it's good they're gone. But if we don't catch any, that means there's not much in the area. So either, way, so it's either way, it's good. Yeah. So yeah. Except when we catch one, it's a bit more exciting. Yeah. I would suggest start small because we all have great ideas. But I would say pick one thing and focus on that. Get that up and running. Get that running well, and then you can move forward from there. We're lucky because we've got Andy who's sort of on tap. Predator Free New Zealand, the group, certainly approach them. They're, they're great and Doc, we've got heaps of information that we've gathered over the time from Doc and they've come out and they've talked to the children about different traps and, and you know, the difference between um, stoats and weasels and, you know. Traps we use are the um, T-Rex traps, so we'd really recommend them, they're real good. We don't just trap rats. And live traps and stuff we'll catch. Ferrets, stoats, possums, weasels. Rats, but not at school. We, that's just in the community. Feral cats. Yeah, feral cats. We're getting a the uh, e traps, live catcher traps coming to Otawa soon to see if we're getting ferrets, rats, um, possums, stoats, weasels. And we probably won't have them on the school property. We'll probably Those kids could just set them off. And yeah, so we'll probably put them around the neighbourhood, like on land that we're allowed or the school knows. And also there's like a little box on top that when the trap is set off, it sends an email or a message to, to a phone, eh? Yeah. And so that way you don't have to check it every day. Unlike other live traps, you have to check them every day. So, don't want to be cruel. Yeah, so they're more effective and less work. Yeah. And they also have this other little box with like a bottle on top and it squirts bait into it each night. Yeah, it's like nine. 24 hours. Five hours. Yeah. Because you usually yeah. find that you, you're getting your um, pests at, a bat, at night. There's a number of different baits, so there's like mayonnaise and fish oil there's a new one that's chicken stock that's just a th and then there's the old just like peanut yeah peanut butter cheese cheese <laughs> or, or for possums it's like apple and like cinnamon yeah right. so something like this one. something with cinnamon oh and then there's that possum dough that basically is a mixture of all the things they like it's mostly cinnamon
I would recommend just start small. S start small to start with. Don't try and eat the whole cake at once, just have a little bite. You don't have to do heaps, it can be like um, as simple as... Picking up your rubbish as yeah. you go, or trying to like plant trees even. Yes, plant trees. It's not very difficult, it's not like a big operation where you have to be involved with heaps of people. Start a little group first and then work your way. Like, let's yeah, like the traps and like places where kids probably won't go looking. Yeah. Research. Oh, and don't do it if you have no motivation and you don't really want to do it because otherwise that's just... It's not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> it's a waste of money.